Most most people, uh, like with the booth and everything else, I ask like, okay, how'd you how'd you find out about us, etc. And it's it's almost always either the image or like the the price post or my post about the initial failure of the launch. So I don't know if that's good or not, but. <laughs> If you saw our video on how much video games cost to make, you might remember the segment we did on Brigador. If you haven't seen it, basically, it references Brigador's lead developer, Hugh Monahan's Steam Post, where he breaks down why they're charging what they are for Brigador, and also highlights some other interesting things that you can buy for a cool 20 bucks. It's a fantastic post. That, along with Hugh's imager post titled, Happy Cake Day, Five Years of Game Dev Will Kill You, should be required reading material for indie devs. Well, we were lucky enough to chat with Hugh himself at PAX West. In this interview, Hugh sheds more light into that now famous post, and also shares some tips for new indie game developers wanting to start their own studio. Let's get into it. We are Ask Game Dev, and these are our tips for beginner indie game developers from Brigador developers, Stellar Jockeys. Welcome back. We make videos on how to elevate your game development and inspire others. If after watching this video, you want to continue the game dev conversation, check out the video description for a link to our Discord server. My name is Hugh Monahan. I am the lead dev at Stellar Jockeys. We started the studio with my brother Jack Monahan, who's floating around here somewhere. We have four people in total. Started back in 2011. I do all the game design. So I handle the, the data, all the gameplay, and do a little bit of the level design as well. Both games are they're tactical, isometric action games. Um, mechs, tanks, hovercrafts. It's tactical combat in a fully destructible uh, environment. We give you a level with usually fairly simple objectives, like kill a target, destroy a building, get from A to B. It's up to you on how, what, what you see is the best way to handle that, right? Are you gonna be in the giant bulldozer and just like ram your way through the whole place since the, the level is destructible? Or are you gonna be a guy, you know, infantry with a little stealth suit and you're kind of sneaking around to try and make it out? We have enough of a variety in the game that the fantasy is up to the player on how they wanna go about it. I, it was, that was actually like the second or third draft that I wrote. The first one was just like, FIRE! <laughs> All caps! Da -da 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 -da. So I, I think my English teacher was very proud of me for <laughs> going, going multiple drafts on it. But it's important to consider like, okay, why, why would someone say that your game should be cheaper? Like, where and where is that perspective coming from? Uh, and I know that part of it, like when I sat down and thought about it, part of that was simply coming from what the understanding and expectation of it was for the work involved in making a video game. If you think making a video game is a very cheap and easy thing to do, then it's a natural thing to follow up on, expecting that you're charging you know, way too much for this. It, it's it's the, you know, the, the gap between the perception of it and what's actually involved. So that, that was partly what motivated that. Also, I just, there, there was some, genuine pathos that I needed to exercise in that regard. And I also think like humor is going to get to people faster than anger. Gener I mean, not always, but like that was for me personally, it was, because there was a lot of frustration there, but I knew that I would be much more likely to reach people if, if I, you know, still being earnest about it, but let it, you know, didn't let it just become another like angry internet rant. I was anonymously mailed from Europe, I think, the expensive $20 uh, or $20 or $25 uh, Nickelback poster. Oh, no way, so you got Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I got, I got some, some humorous mail as a result of that. There was that Steam post and there was another uh, image or post I did after we had originally launched, both of which went, went pretty viral. And because Brigador had a big visibility bottleneck, I mean, that was, there were a lot of problems with the game early on, but one of the biggest ones was just that like, it wasn't selling well because people didn't know it existed. And that's, that's the eternal struggle with indie developers, is just simply getting people to know you exist. So any, anything that goes viral in that regard, uh, regardless of the content, if it is pointing to you and your game, that's going to be bringing attention to it. We got a big spike, but it was, it was, it was actually kind of funny because when it happened, I was really frustrated about this, this post. I wrote it out and posted it at like 3 in the morning and then I went to bed and I wake up at, at 10 to the other developer. So we, we were living together at the time. The other developer was like, what did you do? Because <laughs> all of a sudden all this stuff was happening. 
Um, but yeah, so we, we got a big sales bump, and and that's something that, uh, yeah, it, this that still remains to be. I, I think just one of the laws of the internet is is if you can leverage visibility, that's going to make a big difference. Uh, <laughs> whenever you are looking at what other game developers have done, it takes experience to even know what to look for. I, I kind of ambushed myself in that I had set certain games as kind of goals during our development of Brigador, and as a result, we ended up doing this hugely ambitious game, and I was trying to do a lot of things that w were really out of scope of, of the size of the studio that we are and, and of my experience, because I, I didn't, uh, I had no idea of, you know, like what the costs of various things uh, would be. If you want to do something, or like, like do a particular style, or you're curious, like, okay, what, what if I tried this? I mean, don't wait for permission for someone. Like, it, it's good to, to pursue something you're interested in, but at the same time, the game development community is very open. And in my experience, most people, if you just like cold email them, uh, and most people have Twitters or emails and everything, They'll, they'll respond. I kind of stayed in isolation for a very long time and as a result I made a lot of mistakes that I didn't have to make if I had been talking to other people about it and you know posing some of these questions. There's a ton. Um, so there's a guy named Aubrey Sir who is the artist and developer on a game called Overgrowth. He and my brother had worked together, and so he gave us a lot of good advice on, you know, running in the studio and just kind of what are some of the ups and downs on that. Uh, I talked to um, the guys that ended up doing Prison Architect before they even announced Prison Architect. This is like a page and a half long email of <laughs> just like, hey man, like I started my studio and uh, I got this problem. I'm trying to figure it out, and I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, man. And I, it, they were so gracious about it, and I got this like two page long email in response, and like went through all that stuff, and that, like that's. I'm not saying like write a page long emails to people, but that was an extraordinary case and we got a really good response, I got a really good response to it and it was really great advice that helped me work through something in a much faster way than I would have normally. The first GDC I went to was back in like 2012 or 2013. Jamie Griesemer, he's one of the main designers at Bungie on Halo 2 and 3. So I went to one of Griesemer's talks, uh, he gave a really awesome talk, he asked him a question, kind of chatted a little bit after the talk, um, but he was, he was busy and stuff was going on. Well, I ran into him that night uh, at, uh, at a bar. I just went up to him and I was like, I really appreciate your talk. And I, can I, you mind if I ask you some stuff? And he's like, yeah, sure. That conversation lasted a good two and a half hours. And he, he basically just like sat there, he's like, like, hit me. And I started working through like things, I, specific stuff in development, but also troubles I was having uh, just in, in general. And while I'm talking, all these other guys start sitting down at this table, and like some in the back of my head, it's like I like these these are these are video game people. I didn't recognize them at first, and then like around the table, it's like Russell Brower, who's the lead sound designer at Blizzard. It was uh, Chris Zimmerman, who is the co-founder of Sucker Punch. It was like all these huge guys in the industry, and they were the politest people. These guys listened to me like bitch and moan for like an hour and gave me really good advice and kind of talked me off a, a cliff. A lot of that stuff I wasn't able to really put to good use until a lot later and I kind of kind of thinking back on it but those, those kinds of occurrences like if I had been too timid to go up and ask him that wouldn't have happened but also it was, it was also a combination of like being polite about it and he would have been perfectly in his right to be like, ah, you know. That's the kind of community that we have. Uh, and so just, and like, I, you know, I, I will personally say, you know, I'm not, I'm not the lead designer of, uh, of Halo, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty public about my email and Twitter and everything, and if people do have trouble or questions, like, I, I try to be, I might not be the most punctual in responding, but I, I do try to respond to stuff, because that's, there are people who help me like that, and so it's, it's, in a way, it's my responsibility to be able to pass that on. Finish something first. Even if it's the tiniest, tiniest little thing. Make something and bring it all the way through, all the way to fruition. And by that I mean it is something that is distributed, other people are playing it, and if you're gonna sell it, sell it. Because even if you only do one copy or zero copies or even whatever, 
that there are things that you can only learn by making it all the way through that process. We really took it on the chin from our inexperience with launches and, and other other issues. Well, part of that was because I wanted my first game to be this, what ended up being this enormous project. And so I had no experience to fall back on, to, to leverage in order to uh, uh, make it through some of the troublesome waters that comes with it with any launch. If you have a very tiny game where if you mess it up, it's not the end of your dream career. It gives you the ability to to work through some of these things in a low pressure environment as opposed to being, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and you're staring down the barrel. The people that you're making friends with in your teens and twenties are potentially going to be the people that end up being the most important aspects of your career. Those friendships that you develop when none of you are famous or important or when when when, when that friendship is something that is is friendship. It's not there's no collateral, there's no like, oh I'm I'm befriending this guy because I want I want the connection with their company or whatever, right? And it's like, hey, this is that guy. Like, I read your article. This is uh, this is pretty good. And then, you know, we, and we chatted back and forth, like, oh yeah, yeah. And then like five years later, that dude's like one of the biggest deals in the industry. And we have this friendship to fall back on, and it's not, and I'm I'm not you know exploiting that. It's more that like you know, your peers as you're working your way through, like you don't know who the next Spielberg's gonna be. It might be you. Uh, and having those friendships to fall back on and also being I guess present, like don't don't focus so much on that one famous guy, like, oh I wanna be just like so and so developer, right? It's good to have aspirations, but at the same time don't um, don't put everything on them because those guys are at a different stage in their life. They've been through a lot of stuff that you probably don't know about. You know, you're getting just like tip of the iceberg. Uh, so yeah, that's a really weird thing to like rambly finish to it. But yeah, just appreciate and, and just be present with the people around you at the time because who knows where each of you are going to go. Thanks again to Hugh and the Stellar Jockeys team for taking the time to do this interview. For more on Brigador, you can follow Stellar Jockeys on Twitter, join their community on Discord, and wishlist their upcoming title, Brigador Killers, on Steam. For more Ask Game Dev, check out this video on the costs of making video games or this playlist of our game development interviews.